Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm not sure, uh, based on your pre previous conversation, that, that Sir Elton can save him on this one. It, it, it's pretty ugly. Uh, <laughs> the guide, um, I think it's more about the future guide than it is the first quarter performance. But, but what's really disappointing is this stock got hammered after the, the fourth quarter print uh, because they guided to a, a, a really abysmal uh, first quarter, which, which we've now seen was, was sort of in line with that guide. Um, but the crazy thing about it is the, the, the remainder of the year was really aspirational as we, as we think about what was built into the implied guidance for the remainder of the year. And I think a lot of people were scratching their heads at the time and, and wondering if this was a buying opportunity. Uh, but those numbers were not layups. Uh, and, and as we're seeing now, they, they brought all of those, those targets down pretty substantially after just, you know, uh, you know it, was, it was late August, early September when, when we last heard from them. There was a month left in the, in the first quarter. Uh, it's pretty amazing just, just how much worse things appear to have gotten with respect to the outlook here. What, what levers can they pull here, James? I mean, would you welcome if they put through f further price cuts or, or would the market hate that? No, I, I think the last time through, um, I, look, we all know that, that price cuts are a part of the strategy here and that, that they are an inevitability and, and that allows them to, to reach uh, an even larger market. But it's, it's at this stage of the growth curve, uh, I think three months ago when, when they pulled that lever, um, it was a little bit surprising that it, that it was this early and it doesn't leave you um, a whole lot of, of dry powder, so to speak. Um, you know, I think new products should help. Um, the, the the big remaining new product that, that everybody's been talking about for the for a long time is the rower. Uh, I think that's that's ultimately gonna gonna come out, and it's not in numbers, uh, at least that I'm aware of. Um, and so that should help. Um, but but what this tells us today is that their existing products, right, their their core, their bread and butter, uh, the bike, which they just lowered the the, the price on, it didn't stimulate demand the, the way that they would have hoped. And the new treadmill, um, which is always, you know, I, I for a long time looked at that as, as uh, the next big catalyst, just doesn't seem to have caught on the way that they would have hoped at, at, at this stage. Well, they talk about that in the in the in the shareholder letter. He, ta you know, they and they actually they they spin it as a positive. Obviously, they cut the price of the bike, thirty nine dollars per month to fourteen ninety five, and and says that the biggest growth here is younger and less affluent customers. Yet he says among non-members, there remains a lingering perception that Peloton is a luxury item and they have to amplify their message there through marketing to get ahead of the holiday season. So, you know, I could, I could see the, the price cut being a positive or a negative. Negative, sure, if, if, if it's looking like they're sort of devaluing the brand and going more promotional, but positive if it does open up this new audience that maybe just takes a, a while to get there because of lack of awareness that this is something that is more affordable. That's right, but I, I hear what you just read, and I just I just see dollar signs, right? It, they are going to need to spend a lot of money to reach out to those consumers, and I think we're seeing that with the guy. Uh, three three months ago, they were talking about a, a three hundred twenty five million dollar loss for the year. Now it's more like four fifty at the midpoint. Um, so that's one hundred twenty five million dollars worse versus three months ago. I think some of that's top line for sure, um, that maybe it's not catching on as quickly as they would like. But I think more of it is is the, the, the marketing budget really getting ratcheted up. Um, I've still got to dig through some of these numbers, but, but my guess is that that's what we're talking about here, that they're back to sort of square one, right? We had this pandemic period where these things sold themselves, right? People didn't have a whole lot of options in, in terms of their workout regimens. Now, all of a sudden, you know, the full complement of, of fitness uh, alternatives are available to people. And so they're going to have really have to work to get mindshare, particularly in a category that they're not known for, right? Treadmill. Peloton is a, is a biking term, right? Is a cycling term. Uh, most people aren't even aware that Peloton sells a treadmill. No, you're absolutely right. They're, they're saying that they're taking steps to re-examine their expense base and adjust their operating costs. James Hardiman, thank you for joining us. The stock getting crushed after hours.